today I have my full review of the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. So typically I would take the shoe up to around about 100 miles before I give you my full review, but I've got a backlog of shoes which are demanding deconstruction by yours truly. I've got the Alios 4s, I've got the A6 Glide Rides, I've got a Mystery Trail shoe, all needing some deconstruction, so I've got to move on. Hit 60 miles in these, I'm giving you my full review. So I've curtailed my testing at 60 miles. I think I've got a good feel for this shoe now. I think I can kind of give you my honest opinions at this point. There's quite a few viewers that have particularly enjoyed hearing about which albums I've been listening to recently. So album recommendation for today comes from Kurt Vile and Courtney Barnett. Their album, Lot of Sea Lice, uh, came out in 2017. Really great album. I think it's only about nine tracks on there in total, but some really chilled out tunes, just right for those lower paced long runs. And it's got this cool kind of pull out cover. Really awesome. So from albums to this one, got a bit of an album analogy for you. So overall, the Fuel Cell Rebels, part Radiohead, part Spice Girls. So aesthetically, this shoe's kind of odd. There's no way of getting around that. It's got that weird protrusion, um, which kind of actually stands out a bit more when you hold it up this way. You can see this section here, it just is odd. Certainly a strange looking shoe. I think that strange protrusion on the outer side really does make it look like, a, I don't know, just nothing else really. There's nothing else on the market that looks like this thing right now. I think the upper really does remind me um, quite a bit of the Nike zoom fly flying it or perhaps there's elements of the carbon x as well with this kind of stitched on uh, structure type affair here i kind of like the uh, actually the stitched on mesh here to kind of provide a bit more structure to the shoe itself you can see that the foam's taken a real beating here already after 60 miles and on the reverse side there's still elements there that are really really crush that foam is really taking a beating aesthetically there's some considerable compression and some wrinkling throughout i'd suggest the foam is similar in feel really to the zoom x i don't think that the energy returns anywhere near as good but certainly in terms of feel and responsiveness it's very similar the shoe's kind of really starting to curve up here at that forefoot area where the foam's starting to kind of bed in a little bit and certainly feeling like the uh, mesh material is starting to constrict very slightly quite similar actually this curve to what you get with the Pegasus turbos that always tends to happen with those shoes I think where I've been taking these through wetter conditions and then allowing them to dry naturally always allow them to dry naturally um, but that does seem to affect the shoes ability to kind of return to where it was previously so I've mainly used these shoes at paces between eight minutes per mile and about six minutes 30 per mile I'll put some conversions up a few of the uh, viewers have asked me to do that so I will remember this time I'm sorry I can't quite remember the names of the viewers but I will put those conversions up for you here the upper is showing no considerable aesthetic signs of wear you've got that mesh um, which makes up pretty much most of the upper and a stretchy booty type material um, within that upper the heel area is pretty flexible apart from a heel counter right here that's actually pretty solid the heel counter as you well know if you've watched some of my videos recently on the shoe in terms of getting a good fit and better performance out of this shoe, I've had to make some customizations. The two main customizations are replacing the original laces with some that are far shorter and not as springy. Those laces just weren't any good really at achieving a consistent lockdown over the top of the forefoot. Every time you tied them, they just seemed to kind of spring backwards and you just had something that really wasn't appropriate. And secondly, I removed those insoles. They were incredibly thin. I think that the shoe is kind of a bit of a mix up. It isn't quite true to size. And I wouldn't recommend it going up half a size really either. I don't think length is the problem here. I think it's really depth. Removing those insoles really left me with a much better fitting shoe. It really did help. I didn't really feel much of a difference in terms of the responsiveness of the midsole. I found those original New Balance insoles very slippery. They're really, really thin. Uh, they just don't really seem to do an awful lot inside the shoe. The ride feels like something more of like a car with a harder suspension now. And it really does suit the typical use case scenario for the shoe now, which is that of higher paced tempo runs. That side, 
even with those customizations, the shoe isn't all 50s drag racing and juvenile delinquents. I think that the shoe can be used as a easier day shoe as well. It's got enough cushioning there to take it out for some longer runs at slower paces. The foam in the midsole does give a reasonable amount of cushioning. That thermoplastic unit here at the forefoot area does give a little bit of snap and I think it's kind of soft enough to utilize it perhaps up to something like 10 or maybe even 13 miles if you really needed to. I wore these on a run up to about 10 miles at seven minutes 30 per mile pace. And my legs and feet felt good, both directly after the run and also the next day. It certainly is a lovely lightweight shoe. There's very little to this, it's incredibly light, but I think it does need a little bit of tweaking to get it to a really usable state. So could sizing up very slightly help? Well, I don't think that length really here is the problem. It's more the depth in the toe box area. I've got a relatively narrow foot and I think even if I have problems, then certainly if you have a wider foot, you're gonna to need to go for the wider version of this shoe, which does appear to be readily available. At around about 110 pounds, these do present a cheaper and slightly more lightweight option to the Zoomfly Flyknit obviously without the carbon fiber plate. I do, however, doubt the long-term durability of the outsole on the Rebel. You can probably see here the outsole already has a number of holes, there's debris and stuff just wedged into the outsole. The rubber traction area here also shows some early signs of wear. It's already starting to kind of peel off a little bit around about this forefoot area and certainly in that kind of toe off area there, there's some quite considerable wear already after 60 miles. The foam is already quite tarnished really, especially the exposed areas here, and the kind of nature and consistency of it make it very difficult to remove any of those pieces of debris. They're just firmly wedged in. I think it's a piece of like rock or metal just wedged in there. Also, I've noted that debris and mud and stuff is starting to get stuck in these kind of holes that are cut out of the traction pad here. I think that could start to become a bit of a problem over time if you get some certain types of debris in there. And it's not gonna make for a great area here in terms of uh, traction and durability. Especially where the thermoplastic unit is, it seems as if the traction pad doesn't really stick to that. So stuff's getting kind of caught underneath the rubber section and the thermoplastic unit. So I think if you're on a bit of a budget and you're looking for a tempo shoe, it certainly really fits the bill uh, around about 110 pounds if you can customize it a little bit perhaps you'll have to fool around with the insole slightly and get some slightly shorter laces uh, that aren't quite as elastic as the ones that come with it as stock it certainly presents a good alternative to the zoomfly fly net which is now becoming quite difficult to get hold of in certain sizes and i think it's certainly a better shoe for tempo efforts than the Zoom Fly 3. So I will keep this one in the rotation as I go forward now. Things are starting to get a little bit cooler. Things are starting to get wetter. It is a good shoe in terms of utilization in quite wet conditions. I found that the water actually escapes from the shoe relatively quickly. So I'm gonna keep it in there. Um, certainly been enjoying using the shoe, but I've gotta move on. Lots of other shoes to test out for you. Quick shout outs. Some fantastic ideas from a long-term viewer, Harry Martin. Thank you for those ideas, Harry. It's much appreciated. Thanks for making it through to the end of the video, guys, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please consider hitting that subscribe button down here somewhere and give the video a thumbs up like. It really helps us to push the videos up towards the top of the pool. Make sure you comment below. Tell me if you've used the Fuel Cell Rebel or perhaps if you're a fan of one of the other kind of similar competitors to that shoe. Make sure you share the video with other runners. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.